What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We are back today with another Ferrari 412 video for you guys. If you guys watched the last episode on this car, we showed you guys the design for our rear suspension system. Today, we're gonna to be showing you guys the process of actually building the rear suspension system that we designed. So the rear suspension system that we are building is made up of eight major components, the lower and upper arms, the uprights, and the brake hats. Before we could go ahead and machine those, Steve had to do what is called tool pathing for the CNT machines to know what to cut. I'm gonna let him explain a bit about that process, and then we'll get to machining. The first thing you have to have, obviously, is your actual solid model. And in the case of this, this is one of our rear uprights. The very next thing you need is you need to actually draw the piece of metal that you're going to take this part out of. So in this case, you can see here, this is the piece of stock. I frequently use an analogy that was used by Leonardo da Vinci. He said that in his mind, the statue of David was already in the marble. He already saw the statue in the marble before he started to cut it out. That description is really, really similar to what CNC machining is. So with CNC machining, you basically start with a block and you have to envision the part inside the block. From there, what we then want to do is actually make what's called an assembly. And, and here's the actual assembly for this part. And then you'll make these reference lines that end up being for your coordinate system. So the next thing that you do after that is you have to basically pick and figure out all the individual tools that you're gonna use. So in the case of this, you can see here, we have all these different tools and all of these things here are different operations that those tools are used for. Basically, all you really have to do is have the stock defined, the tool defined, and then at that point, you can set up some boundaries. In the case of this, I didn't need to set up any boundaries. You can set up some boundaries to tell it where you want. And then the only other thing you really want is basically of how high to start and how high to stop. So in the case of this, I basically set it up so that the not to machine anything any lower than halfway down. So basically everything that you see white, anything that's still in the material's way, any material that's still in the way, it'll cut it. Now, another feature that this has that's kind of interesting is you can go here and you can say the rest machine that you want it to use a previous operation. And what that will do is the computer will look at all the operations that were performed before and it'll see the tool uh, that ran before and what material was already removed. And then once it does that, basically, it's then going to go ahead and decide what material now needs to be removed. Anyway, um, that's it. We'll go ahead and go out and start making this stuff. The fit was absolutely exactly what I want, but now what I've done is I've gone and I've opened this up just a slight little bit so that when we anodize the part, then this thing should fit absolutely perfectly snug.
and this has to be machined from the top, the bottom, and both sides still. I had to make this spacer here for my vise, to lift the vise up so that we would have room to flip from one operation to another. With that, our rear brake hats are done. Here they are on the actual rotors, now with the five by 114 pattern. With those done, Steve will be moving on to the upper and lower arms. I actually took the time to actually draw the tool holder as the whole spindle so that we could do the actual simulation and see the whole size of the actual spindle and make sure the spindle doesn't hit the stock. And then that's why I had to make this in steps. Those steps are actually necessary so that even with the long tools that I'm using, it still needs that material removed like that in steps so that it has enough clearance to get in there without hitting the machine. The reason that I want to do the holes first, even though we have these holes here that we're going to be able to use to mount to the fixtures, these holes actually are the the only thing in this part that's critical down to like a half thousand. They have to be really, really, really accurate or the amount of pressure that it holds on the bushing won't be accurate. So uh, that being said, this whole part is going to be way more stable to machine and much easier to not have it buzz and chatter and do something weird. We can actually machine it most accurately when the actual material is heavy. So that's why this needs to be done first. I had to make this fixture plate that you see here, which is made out of tooling plate, because the vise does not open up big enough to hold these arms. So the piece of material is 18 by 20, and the vise, the biggest piece I can hold is 14.
So with all of the rear suspension parts now machined, we sent them off to get anodized. The client specifically asked for a titanium gray color for the anodize. So let's see what you guys think. So we got our rear suspension parts back from anodize. So let's get these things opened up and uh, see what they look like. So this is an upper arm. So you guys can see we went with kind of a gray titanium kind of color. This is what the client asked for. I think it looks pretty good. Of course, we'll have to see how it looks on the car. There's one of the lower, lower arms. The last Christmas present for Steve to open is the, of course, the rear uprights. I am super stoked with how the rear suspension came out. The anodizing looks better than I could have expected. What do you guys think? As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you and your family a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you guys next time.